This is Cole Hastings, a popular influencer and fitness coach. He was an avid coffee drinker until he decided to quit for six months. How can you do that? Although difficult at first, what he originally planned to be temporary was so fulfilling he decided to make it permanent. I found that I had even more energy than when I used to consume caffeine. So why did he do it? How does quitting coffee help your skin? Why is coffee so addictive? Got some coffee. This is Your Body On, quitting coffee for a year. There are 150 million coffee drinkers in the United States, each consuming approximately three cups daily. They drink it more than any other beverage except water. That's around 146 billion cups every year. And the U.S. isn't even one of the top 10 coffee drinking countries. I really need coffee, coffee, coffee. Coffee consumers in Finland enjoy as many as nine cups a day. I'd be shaking all the time if I drank that much. But why does caffeine make us so alert? And if you quit, what are the withdrawal symptoms? Well, make yourself some herbal tea and strap in. We'll take you through this journey week by week and see how you fare. Week one. You've become so used to your morning coffee that it feels like something is missing. You're groggy and have trouble focusing. That's because caffeine is a stimulant and you don't have that anymore. Caffeine is the most addictive component of coffee. It's also found in cola and non-herbal teas. As a natural substance found in some plants, caffeine stimulates your central nervous system, making you more alert. It also enhances dopamine signals in your brain, helping with both your emotions and staying motivated. You're beginning to question just why you've decided to quit your daily cup of joe. <laughs> Week 2. The headaches have been horrible. This is because caffeine constricts blood vessels, which reduces blood flow to the brain. Now that you're off the lattes, you'd think things would be better. But the extra blood flow to the brain is making your head pound even more. Don't worry, this is temporary. Your energy levels are so low that you have trouble completing the most basic tasks. You're feeling nauseous and your muscles are sore. Nobody had better even try talking to you as you're far more irritable than normal. You're seriously thinking about quitting, quitting coffee. Oh, you can't even think straight. I need a coffee. But don't give up yet. Caffeine withdrawal symptoms usually only last two to nine days. So you're almost through the hardest part. Week three. You've made it. Been feeling better every day. The headaches are long gone, even the regular ones you had before you quit coffee. Yes, too much caffeine can cause anxiety, but it can also exacerbate mental health issues. These include sleep and eating disorders. As a stimulant, caffeine disrupts your circadian rhythm, affecting your normal sleep cycle. Now that you're off it, you've been sleeping better than you have in years. You've basically reset your internal clock and stopped your body from producing adrenaline at the wrong times. Your disposition has improved significantly. You feel more relaxed and far less anxious than when you were drinking coffee. Week 10. You may have been worried that cutting out those tasty mocha frappuccinos would sap your energy, but lucky for you, that's definitely not the case. The caffeine you used to ingest would give you short spurts of adrenaline to fuel spikes in your energy levels, but that energy is very short-lived and disappears quickly, resulting in a system-wide crash. Without caffeine, your adrenal glands aren't being excessively stimulated. This allows them to provide lots of natural energy. I feel more hip and energetic now. See, I told you it would pay off. You feel great and ready to tackle your day. Week 26. Not only do you feel good, but you look good as well. Your teeth aren't being discolored by coffee, and your skin has a healthy glow to it. Caffeine can give your skin an unhealthy looking gray tinge and reduce collagen production. With caffeine out of the picture, your skin is more equipped to fight the natural effects of aging. And getting better sleep means you'll have proper beauty rest for your skin to recharge. Week 52. A year has passed and you have no desire to start drinking coffee again. You feel healthier than ever and you've lost weight, especially if you were a two creams, two sugars kind of person. Those calories can add up quickly, especially with flavored coffees that contain large amounts of added sugar. Lately, you've noticed even the smell of sugary coffee turns you off. I don't like coffee. It's a vassal constrictor. 
When you started this journey, you worried you would miss your daily ritual. Instead, you replaced it with an occasional cup of herbal tea. And the social aspect? That's been a non-issue. Nobody really cares if you have a juice or herbal tea instead of a coffee. And if they do, well, that's their problem. You feel great, and that's all that matters. If you do decide to quit coffee, don't go cold turkey. Wean yourself off of it slowly to help reduce the nasty withdrawal symptoms. But what would happen if you did the opposite? Could you stomach 100 cups of coffee in a day? We'll get wired on another episode of Your Body On.